Playing retro games has never been easier. You can pick up these cheap emulating handhelds and bring all of your favorite games with you anywhere you go. More often than not, they come with micro SD cards installed, preloaded with thousands of ROMs to get you started. A few weeks ago, I made a video on this, a flash cart which can play Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs on the original hardware. It cost $35. Now, why would we want to play games on the original hardware when much newer things are available out there with better screens in them? Game Boys aren't as crusty as you remember them. There is some incredible mods out there which massively improves your gaming experience. Backlights used to be a thing of rarity, only for those who could afford to fork out $100 for an AGS-101 or lucky enough to find one locally. Fast forward to now and LCDs can be picked up for £30, which can be installed into a Game Boy with no soldering, a simple plug and play method. The next thing to do is buying the games. Pokemon, Zelda, Mario, they're all classics, must-haves. You need them, but not for that price, you bloody well don't. So we settle for the cheaper alternatives reproductions as they are called. But we are still faced with one problem, space. Which games do you take with you? You can't bring all of them to the family meal you have no interest in attending, but you need Tetris for the car journey, Mario Land for when Auntie Mary is telling you about the church choir, and Spud's Adventure for the inevitably long toilet journey to escape the madness. That's where the EverDrive comes in. A $142 innovative little device, which is the solution to all of the problems made by Igor Golubovsky, definitely got that name wrong, also known as Crix. The EverDrive has been around for over a decade, multiple different revisions and multiple different platforms. But the one we're gonna be taking a look at today is called the EverDrive X7 for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. This thing is absolutely magical. Let me read some of the specs off the website. Isolated RTC. This allows games with an inbuilt game clock function like Pokemon and Harvest Moon to still fully operate, unlike the knockoff we reviewed a few months ago. Not only that, but isolated means multiple games can use the real-time clock function without interference. How does that even work? Save states. Simply squeeze the Game Boy and it will open the in-game menu to allow you to save up to 128 kilobytes of data. Sorry, squeeze the Game Boy. Did I read that right? Squeeze the Game Boy. Yup, too right. You squeeze the cartridge and it has a switch underneath and it opens the in-game menu. Open the game again, squeeze the cartridge and load it back to your save on your next gaming session. You can also soft reset back to the main menu when you want to change games. Now, I upset the Game Boy community in my video on the EverDrive as it is a knockoff of Crix's product. Now, whilst that is definitely true, the EverDrive is in a different market to the Chinese knockoff completely. It has a one year warranty, fixing or replacing the unit you purchase for up to 365 days after purchasing. But it doesn't stop there. There is also a lifetime warranty. If the cart breaks, send it to them, and even after a year, if they can fix it, they will send it back for free. If you think you're getting that with the Chinese one, you are deeply mistaken. The overall build quality and software stability of Crix's EverDrive is night and day. Whilst the knockoff is running off of a cracked version of one of the old EverDrive software, the GBX7 is completely up to date, and later updates I'm sure will be made available through his website. So what are my final thoughts then? On a device that costs $140, we definitely cannot distract that fact. It is absolutely fundamental that we talk about the price. Hypothetically speaking, you can go online and download every single ROM ever made. Heck, you can even get an SD card preloaded with them on eBay. I would always advise to go the safer route and just dump the ROMs of the pre-existing cartridges that you own that the developer got the money for back in the day and then play those. So essentially what you'd be using this for is sort of carrying around your games library on one cartridge. Another thing to take into consideration with both of these is it does sort of devalue the experience. When you have thousands of games to go through, you're never really going to have your entire focus on that one game because subconsciously you know that there are other ones with you. Whether we like it or not, China are always going to be creating copies of things for cheaper. Their manufacturing costs and labor are less and they're also producing larger quantities of it. It's a harsh fact and a harsh reality. It definitely sucks more knowing that they're doing it to these sorts of things because obviously Crix is someone who started this whole thing as a passion. 
definitely still is his passion now, I'm sure. And China have just sort of gone out there and made a reproduction of it. They're both absolutely brilliant. Crix's one is clearly yards better than the fake one, but the fake one does exist and it is a lot cheaper. I'm gonna conclude the video there before I say something I regret saying. I hope you guys have enjoyed. This video has taken me hours and hours and hours to make. I've actually been working off of scripts and stuff, which is not something that I've ever done, but I just really wanted to get all the information correct and get my point across um, in a good way. Hopefully I've done that. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of Crix's EverDrive versus the cheaper one. It's definitely a pretty interesting topic that's come up in the gaming community. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.